You can see how this guy just comes flying in. But this is a five on five, and we get a free rusher right in Mahomes' ear immediately. The guard does try to pull around, but guards are not fast enough to do this. But bottom line is we're getting free instant heat every single time we run this play. What are you going to do? He's double covered. He's bracketed. Everybody's bracketed. Even the tight end that he threw to is bracketed because you can see the tight end where the free safety is coming across. This defense is so hard to do anything against because everybody's double covered on the field. For the fastest, cheapest, most reliable coins on the market, check out my coin sponsor, MMOXP.com, and use discount code MONEYSHOT to get 5% off your order. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Snip of the Mad Cheese, as always. Got a practice mode style video for you guys, which is something I'm putting out just about every single Friday for things to go a little bit more in-depth into whatever I'm recently using in my gameplay. Now, this week, I put out a new defense out of the quarter normal. So I'm going to go over all of the plays that I plan on putting out in the, the next couple of weeks in my gameplays right here in this video. So if you guys watch those gameplays, I'll have links in the description for that. You can come right here. You can learn the entire defense because pretty much every single gameplay video, I might go over a defense or two. And this entire formation probably has like seven or eight plays. I'm not sure I'm going to go over all of them in this video, but I'm going to go over the most important ones when it comes to my scheme. But as always, if you guys want me to continue to do these weekly practice mode style videos on Fridays, make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, before I get started, as always, if you guys need more help on offense or defense, you can instantly download these or any of my ebooks simply by clicking the links in the description or the top end comment. Now, I'm going to start this video by taking you guys through my setup. My four play audibles would typically be the cover two man, which is kind of like a prevent passing defense. Um, it's not necessarily something that I would call a lot, but it's definitely the uh, one of my top passing defenses for, for deep passing, stop deep passing. I also have the under smoke, which is my favorite blitz. It's one of the few blitz in this formation there's really only like two or three that i like to use but this one here anytime i want to send extra pressure i'm going to go to the under smoke it's also a good outside run defense because of how the cornerbacks uh come from the outside so a lot of times it's good for stopping outside runs as well the fz3 sky which is a zone mix i always try to have at least one zone blitz and this is probably the best one in the formation and the cup for drop which is going to be one of my best pass defenses but it's also one of my best run defenses so that's pretty much the play there if i'm going to be using this uh for outside run defense which i I mentioned the FZ3 Sky is probably one of my better outside run defenses as well. For my coaching adjustments, the most important ones are to have my zone coverage to match because a lot of these defenses are matching zone coverages. And I also want to make sure that I have my auto alignment at the base so they all look the same pre-snap. And for my substitutions, I typically want to make sure I just have speed everywhere, but especially at these blitzing cornerback spots, as I'm going to want a lot of speed there. So I definitely want this guy here. This is a safety that blitzes quite a bit. So a lot of times I'll put my fastest safety there in brown. But you really just want to have speed at all these inside cornerbacks, just cheap speed guys. So I have right now, I have a bunch of cheap speed, 92 to 94 speed guys like Avante Maddox and... Um, uh, Isaiah Rogers senior these guys are just fast they're good cornerbacks but they're mostly just fast and then when it comes to my middle linebacker I typically just want to have a fast linebacker here but if it gets to a point where I'm using this ex strictly as a pass defense you can take this guy out completely and just put in a, a, a another safety uh, once again a fast user safety would be best but that's pretty much going to be your setup if it's something where you're you think you got to stop the run a little bit more often you want to keep a linebacker here so you don't get bulldozed but if it gets to a point where the game's out of hand and you're just straight you know in pass defense defense the whole time put a safety or fast safety here for your user now i'm going to start off with uh the play that i showed in my last gameplay video i also have a link in the description and in the top right uh, corner right now popping up for the gameplay that i showed from this defense but the defense is going to be the cover for drop so let's go let's pick that on offense i'm just going to pick random gun now this first play here it's really meant to be uh, a run defense um, but it also has a lot of pass defense capabilities. I would say if you're going to use this as a run defense, just, you know, in a look like this, there's so many different looks you can get on offense. Number one, I always want to bring these safeties down. Whether you just bring them down manually into the box like this with your with, by, by selecting them, that's one way to do it. But you always want to bring them down to the box. And that's because these guys will play the run first as long as they don't get past. They will uh, essentially run commit as long as they don't get past. But they also won't get beat like a run commit. They'll drop back and they'll, they'll take away their lanes. But bringing them down close to the line like this is going to get them into the action a lot quicker. And with this defense, I'm going to need that. I'm going to need them to get involved much faster because i don't have a lot of size on the field so i always want them down in the box if i think it's gonna be an inside run i want to take that away i could always um, just pinch the defensive line but i think it's gonna be a pass though once again just spread them and guess pass if i guess pass from a spread look i'll get good rush for, i'll get a good pass rush
pass from these three down linemen. But like I said, I don't really know what we're looking at here because I pick random. Uh, and I'm not going to run this against the computer too much, but, uh, but this is pretty much it. I mean, if you can see right here, bringing these guys down is not a bad look either. Anytime you have receivers that are in tight like this, you can pinch the entire defense. You don't even have to worry about, um, I don't know what happened over here with... Um, with this outside cornerback though but you can if, if you they don't have receivers out wide you can pinch the entire defense and you won't really have any concerns with um you know with the uh, the run getting outside or uh these receivers getting outside or above the cornerbacks so i go ahead and run it like this one time but like i said i don't plan on really running this too much um because it's not really the, the point like i have you know plenty of gameplay showing me running this but you can see there's nothing open but a check down there so hopefully we'll get some different looks here we got like a spread look this is something where, like I said, I can't just press the entire defense because now we have that cornerback uh, in danger of getting beat if there's a fast receiver there on a streak. So what I can do is I can press the entire defense because the other side, we just have a tight end. I can press that side just in case it's a run play. And then I can select uh, individual adjustment and then back off this cornerback here. But I definitely want these guys to be down the box as often as possible, especially when it comes to these flat defenders. Like, I don't really need to worry about this flat defender getting roasted by this slot receiver. I mean, I can bring him out a little bit if I want to get him in front of that. But ultimately, that's going to be how you're going to want to run this play. Now, you can also, uh, before you do all this, you can base a line quite a bit because a lot of times this cornerback here, say it's a bunch, I'll see if I'll get this look later, but if there's a bunch set, a lot of times this guy will go over to the bunch side and he'll he'll just basically, you know, hold down the bunch side. So if you have like three receivers to one side, you can always baseline and this hook curl will pick the side that's busier so that he can get into the play. But this is pretty much it here. I'm gonna guess this time's gonna be a pass because <laughs> I, I just don't think they're gonna run out of this look. So let's just go ahead and let's guess pass one more time. Or this time we'll guess pass, we can do that last time. And we'll see if we get a pretty good uh, look across here. As once again, nothing's open. I mean, I know I'm going against the computer, but uh, he did complete that because he's Patrick Mahomes, but there really wasn't anything open. I mean, that's not a good pass. That's not a high percentage pass there. So here's the look I was talking about. We have three receivers on the one side. And now you see if I if I if I base a line, which is wide triangle, then right on the left stick, you can see how that guy goes over there. Now we have more tension on the bunch side, which is perfect because that's what I want. I don't really want I want my I want the 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 most of the safeties to be in the most important area. And now that we have um, you know uh, uh, an empty backfield look, I can just guess pass. If I'm going to do this, I also want to start like right here, just try to help out somebody on the edge before dropping back as I would just come down over this guard. Hopefully it doesn't double team. And then it gives me an opportunity here. But you know, quick out routes, stuff like this. I mean, it's still a cover four. Things like quick out routes, the same routes that beat, um, you know, they're gonna win. They're, they're gonna beat cover four, it just is what it is. So here I base aligned once again. So you can see this time though, the, the hook curl started on that side. Um, but you know, it's really up to me. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna start on this side too. I'm gonna bring this guy over. This could be a run play. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll bring these safeties down because, like I said, that's the most important thing. If you're going to bring anybody down on this play, like I said, I could press. I could bring everybody down because I'm not really too worried about that receiver since he's in tight. I'm not too worried about any of these receivers in tight getting outside above the cornerback. That's just not going to happen from this look. So anytime I have that, I can press the entire defense and not be worried about it. If the receivers split out wide, though, different story. And then this is pretty much the base defense. I pinched the defensive line quite a bit. As you can see, we actually did get a run, but it was an outside run. And, you know, it's uh, you got a lot of speed on the field, so you should be able to make up for that. Now, you can't sit back in coverage the whole time. Uh, there are different various blitzes that you can do here. My favorite would be the under smoke. This is also a very good uh, run defense. So for this defense, you really have your choice. You can either blitz with the user manually if they don't respect the fake, which I'll go ahead and I'll try to do this time. Because there, I mean, that was an actual run play. Like I said, it's a good run defense. This really is. These two plays, the first two plays I'm showing you, are both good run defenses. But you really have two ways to run this blitz. And it's up to me. I mean, on a look like this, once again, I can base line. I can show my hand. I can show what type of defense I'm in. Um, and now they'll know it's a man zero, but I can still blitz if I want to bring this guy back down. There's two ways to blitz though. You can blitz the way I was showing you with the, uh, with the safety here and drop him back, or you can do the full blitz and leave him where he is and take whoever's on the running back, which here is Darius Slay, which I'm not really a fan of, but I can take who's on the running back, put him on a blitz and then drop back. Uh, I just have to make sure that I cover the running back. Now, if I do that, there, you know, you got a small issue with this blitzer as he's now kind of coming in the same gap. But I can drop him back and just let him come in as like a delayed blitzer. Doing this, like I said, I got to cover the running back, which I don't really want to do. But you can see the pressure was a little bit better and it forces a bad decision as Mahomes throws an interception. So there's really two ways to do this play. 
Um, I keep base aligning. Like I said, I don't even have to really get those cornerbacks down. They'll do a good job as is. I'll go and I'll do this. Look, I'll spread them. And you'll see how these cornerbacks are still going to shoot around the gaps. It's still best to get them down to the line, but you don't always have time for that. So this time, like I said, I'm not going to have that look. And you can see the safety does do a pretty good job of filling those holes on the inside, even though that wasn't the best look. And here we have another look where we're going to have a wide open receiver, which happens sometimes. This defense has this issue where whenever you see one of these guys, which is basically a, uh, a QB contain, you're going to have a receiver that's that's not uh, covered, which in this scenario is going to be the RB route. So I either got to fix that or I just have to change place. You can see now everything's messed up. Sometimes this happens and you won't be able to fix it. In this scenario, just change the play because this is not going to work. But you can still have some success. I'm going to try to run this blitz like this. This is actually this actually makes it a better run defense for some reason. These keeping teams do a pretty good job in run defense. But you can see how it messes up the entire blitz. So sometimes you'll get looks like that. If you get a look where you have a keeping contain, that means that somebody is uncovered on the field. So last play, this is an empty backfield look. In this look, you're definitely going to want to fake blitz before dropping back. This is the best way to run this, as, you'll, as you should get somebody in free. And we get our first sack as Mahomes realized nobody was open and had to run for it. You see, I'm not too worried about the results. I'm just trying to show you guys the plays that are using my gameplays. You can watch my gameplays for the results. My favorite blitz that's also a zone is the FC3 Sky. This is one of the reasons that I put uh, zone coverage to match, because this is a matching defense. Let's go and let's pick that. I always want to have at least one blitz that's a zone coverage as well. And this one here is really good, especially if you have a bunch look like this. You can see how it's going to hide this look. So all I'm going to do is pinch defensive line. For this play, I mean, if the running back goes out in a pattern, it'll probably most likely get open. But uh, that's just how cover three is. If he goes in an underneath route, it's going to get open underneath any cover three. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna try to get that blitz off on his side. And I'm going to basically just try to drop down here and get bulldozed once again. Like I said, this is an okay run defense. It really is, as we could do a decent job there. But you can see how my, um, you know, my user as a, as a safety is going to get obliterated. If I was a linebacker, that wouldn't happen. Uh, but this is pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and just, like I said, bring these guys down to the line. As you can see, this isn't necessarily an obvious blitz. I'm probably going to have to drop back. My responsibility is going to be Kelsey once this play starts. Uh, they actually got caught up quite a bit. But I got on the play anyway. Like I said, it's the middle of the field. It wasn't Kelsey, though. Kelsey went out. But I'm sure that the pressure is why Mahomes is getting rid of these passes so quickly. So let's go and let's watch. I don't know who actually got the pressure. This guy here is typically supposed to get picked up, though. He's, he's kind of the sacrificial lamb. And then this guy here, even though he got picked up by the running back, he's not going to stay on that running back very long, as even Reddick was getting off. So, you know, the running back picked it up. But you got to remember, this is only a five-man blitz. So the point is, he might pick it up for a second or two, but he'll usually get off of that. This is another play that's really specific to the offensive personnel. If we have a tight package like look like this, you can base the line to bring all these cornerbacks in. I'm actually going to leave the defensive, end, or the defensive end out wide, though, because he actually spread out there, and I'm fine with that. So we're going to try to get pressure one more time before we move on because there's not a lot to this play. Um, so really good cross plays. There we got instant pressure. I didn't even see what happened. If we watch the replay here, you can see the guard does try to pull around, but guards are not fast enough to do this. And you can see he just gets instant pressure as the cornerback just gets around the edge. Even this type of blocking structure almost lets the defensive end to get in free. As you can see right here, they let him go in free. So a lot of times that guy will even get the pressure. But bottom line is we're getting free instant heat every single time we run this play. There is also a secondary setup that you can do where you're gonna to wanna to bring that cornerback down once again, but I could always use her this guy and bring him over to this side just to try to get that cornerback off free anyway. It's not gonna be as good of a blitz, but it will free up this three rack hook. As you can see now, I can move him over to the three receiver side, to the bunch side, and I can drop back on Kelsey here. So that's basically another way to run it. This here should work pretty good because Pacheco's on the other side, especially if Pacheco runs a route, which he does here eventually. And you can see we get some pretty good pressure as he, you know, he has to throw into a tight window. And we just It just creates better coverage. Now there is another cover three blitz that's also a, uh, a matching cover three, and that's the overload three. This is going to be very similar to the under smoke. As you can see, the, the blitzing structure here is going to look exactly the same once I make my adjustment with this play. I'm just going to want to make sure that I have this guy down to the box once again because his job is to come off the edge and then i really have my choice of blitzing this other cornerback here in ringo even though i don't want him in a qb contain look i want him in like a, a slanting look like he is here so here i still have five zone coverages i'll, I'll man align or baseline once again just to bring everybody in close 
and you can see how I'm gonna have coverage for everything. And now I basically have my choice where I, I could take this guy here, blitz the user before dropping back, which is what I'm gonna typically do. Once again, if it's a run play, I'm gonna wanna be in this gap here. If I think it's gonna be a pass play, I'm gonna be in this gap because I'm gonna wanna follow the running back away. Um, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna be smarter to be in this gap. So we're just gonna leave it like this. And you're gonna see how we can get some uh, some pressure off the edge, pretty much the same way as we almost got an interception there. Once again, I was in the the right area. As we go to the replay here, you can see he gets around this check and release pretty quick, and you're getting pressure. I mean, you have six blockers, which is why it gets temporarily picked up. But if you have a free rusher, you're gonna get that, or if you don't have that check and release, you're gonna get that free rusher every time. As you can see here, the only real issue is this guy ran across because we have a empty backfield look. Typically, the three out cook's gonna start on the side that um, that has the most receiver. So I'm just going to replace that though. I'm just going to basically start on the exact same side. Like I said, I want these guys down to the line. And an empty backfield look, I could spread these guys as much as possible because my job is going to be to drop back on 11. Like I said, everybody's pretty much aligned already that they'll be able to take away other routes. As long as I can get back on 11, I should be fine. Otherwise, Mahomes probably going to hit that right over the middle. And that's exactly what happens as I would have expected, you know, in a gameplay to basically make the exact same read. Now, if I'm blitzing like this, I could always just, you know, hard flat to try to take that stuff away. It's going to just going to cancel the matching principles, but it is what it is. The other thing is if you want to set this play up, it's super easy. All you really got to do is uh, hit wire triangle twice, hit left trigger, hit blitz down on the right stick. That's all you really got to do. And you can see how easily this gets set up. Like I said, I don't really want him in that cubic contain lane, though. I'd rather have him out of that. So I might have to adjust him a little bit. But I find that this play probably works best if you pinch the defensive line and then bring this guy down over. Like I said, if it's a run play, I'm going to bring him down over the gap. I got to drop over the middle regardless. Regardless, so it really doesn't matter which way that I go, but you can see how quick that blitz comes in as it's the exact same pressure you would get from the man zero in the under smoke. Watching the replay once again, I mean, you can see how this guy just comes flying in. We're only sending five blockers, and it looks like we have a check and release tight end. I'm not really sure because he kind of just runs right past them. But this is a five on five, and we get a free rusher right in Mahomes' ear immediately. Now, cover three is probably my favorite coverage. You can see there's two different blitzes you can use from that that are really good. Like I said, they're both also matching cover threes. So there's a lot of really good things to have there. But we can continue to play games with cover three and cover four because I already showed you cover four drop where I'm always bringing bringing the safeties down. But if I want to try to confuse my opponent, I can do that from a cover three look in the three double buzz. I'm going to use this play a lot like cover four, where I'm going to bring these safeties down. And my hope is that my opponent thinks I'm still in cover four. Uh, when it comes to cover three, cover three is typically weak right up the seams, which hook curls don't do a great job of taking care of. But I'm not going to leave these guys in hook curls anyway. I'm going to use them like man defenders. I'm going to basically man them to whoever I think is the biggest concern up the up the slot, which is basically the, the spacing between the safety and the cornerbacks. So in this scenario, I'm not really sure who it's going to be necessarily. I would say, um, you know, B has a good chance at doing that. And I would say Y has a good chance of doing that. Typically, I want to use these guys to man the tight end and the, um, the, the slot receiver because those are the two receivers that your opponent throws the ball to the most. Them and superstar players. Like, Kelsey's a superstar player. So I'll probably man him in this defense most of the game just to take that away. But slot receivers, tight ends, they work the middle and they work the, the the short outside game, which is where most people like to pass. So that would pretty much be how I would use this defense. And then I would also use or this guy as my as my uh, my middle linebacker. I'm going to bring him up right here. This, you know, pinch defensive line, I think it'll be a, a, a run play. But this is really something that I'm just trying to confuse. Um, you know, as you can see, we do a decent job against the run, even though it's not a great run defense. This is just going to be my job, my, my attempt to confuse my opponent by bringing these guys down. And even if they know it's a cover three, they're still going to try to beat these seams and they'll most likely throw a pick uh, if they try to throw the four here. So like I said, I'll man that guy, use this guy as my middle linebacker. My first read here is there's only one receiver that's not double covered, so I'm going to have to jump on 11 or maybe the running back. But the read structure is pretty simple. As you can see right there, I mean, I was all over it. He's the only guy who's not doubled. So it's like doing this really minimizes who you're going to throw the ball to because there's only so many receivers that aren't being doubled. So right here, I could do that again to uh, to X and I could do that again to B. And now it's just my responsibility is going to be either 11 or 87. You know what I mean? It's like there's it's really an elimination game uh, when it comes to, you know, like I said, to me, it's best to eliminate the guys inside. But since I'm closest to uh, to four, 
I think I'd rather, I don't know how I Amanda got across the way. Since I'm closer to uh, to four as the slot receiver, I think I would rather leave him to my responsibility. So now, once again, he's going to be the only guy who's not double covered because even on the outside, you can see the curl flat and the deep zone are covering 84. So it's like he's double covered if he goes inside or if he goes if he goes outside or if he goes up, he's double covered. So it's like I can really treat that that way and try to cheat over to four here and basically kind of have it like everybody's double covered. As you can see, once again, you'll get a decent, you're, you're going to run against this look pretty decently. You want to save this for pass heavy situations. So here's another scenario like this here, since there's no slot receiver over here, I'm going to man the running back. You know what I mean? There's a lot of different areas that you can man. And now my job is really to maintain Kelsey. So I want to, you know, this guy here, I'm a little, you know, his 87 speed. I'm not comfortable having him all the way down the box, but I'm going to be here. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to move him back a little bit. And this should give me double coverage to everybody except for Kelsey, who once again is going to be my responsibility. So like I said, I'll take that away right away. All over that. Like I said, I'm, I'm tricking the computer to throw right at me because everybody else is covered. And it's going to be the same way with an online opponent. As you can see here, the computer is forced to throw it my way because everybody else is double covered. And it just puts me in a perfect position to make plays all game. If your opponent wants to ignore these double coverages, look how this guy's bracketed. Look how four is bracketed underneath and over the top by the safety and the cornerback what are you going to do he's double covered he's bracketed everybody's bracketed even the tight end that he threw to is bracketed because you can see the tight end where the free safety is coming across to take that or to help out with that play as he's in deep coverage but everybody's bracketed that's what i mean this defense is so hard to do anything against because everybody's double covered on the field after that i really just have a couple of plays that i just use like a prevent like the cover two man it's probably more of like a prevent defense uh, compared to the rest of these. The rest of these are kind of pressure-based, but cover two man, I'm really just going to use if I don't want my opponent to go down the field very quickly. So let's go and let's pick that. For cover two man, I mean, number one, I'm just going to base a line a lot of times, maybe pinch defensive line. Like I said, this is more like a prevent style defense. I don't expect to get pressure. I don't expect to, um, you know, necessarily even stop my opponent. I'm just going to run this so that my opponent doesn't have a ton of open looks, if that makes sense. I don't use this play a ton, but once again, I can use with this guy because he is at least a free defender because he's in a he's in a QB contain or a you know he's in a a look where he's basically just supposed to spy the quarterback and you can see I could help to cut off those routes and man coverage is pretty good I mean I'm not acting like I can't get picks with this because I can uh, as you can see right there the running back probably got the most open but um, yeah I mean it's a good coverage you know what I mean I'm not trying to downplay the coverage I'm just saying that I don't find running this coverage too much over the course of a game as you can see here I cut off this running back because he gets open on what like looks like a Texas route and everybody's pretty much double covered once again with the exception of the outside route and you can see Slade just you know he's in position where I can make a play so this can be a very good pass defense but you can also create a really good um, you know it's got really good coverage if you as long as you just man line or baseline which is all I'm doing wire triangle right on the left stick you can get really good coverage on a look like this with no running back you can just spread the defense get myself on the right guy though i'm not on my middle linebacker and i can just cut off routes over the middle that's all i really got to do my job is to double team any route over the middle as you can see right there they do a very good job but i got back on it enough to make them drop the ball and then you also have a really good base defense for run defense like if you got to look here like if i can create an easy five-man box although he's not really staying in that box i gotta drop him back a little more but this is you got five blockers in a five-man box if it's a run play you at least have a pretty decent run defense setup he's only gets two yards so like i said this here it's a play that i use sparingly but it is a really good defense you know what i mean it's like it's a really good uh base defense as long as somebody's you know in a shotgun or something like that so here we go once again we have you know i can create that five-man box i have a, a, a look where it's going to be hard to run that inside zone and you can see he actually runs a, a screenplay, and I'm all over that. So, like I said, this is a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent box look, with the exception of the fact that typically when you run uh, defenses like this, the safeties don't really help out at all. You can bring them down, you know what I'm saying? Bring them down a little bit the same way, but in cover two, they just drop straight back, so they're not going to help out a ton in run in run support. But you can see how I mean the defense is playing really good. This is a really solid uh, defensive look. So I would say just about all of the plays that I showed you today are very similar in that regard um, that I could probably run all these plays uh, pretty consistently. All these are all these are very good plays. None of them are, are, are lesser than the others. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more like the gameplay that I put out, I'll have that popping up on screen. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my vids and more. Link in the description below.